Acute coronary syndrome, part two. The differential diagnosis of acute coronary syndrome includes multiple causes of chest pain. This slide contains a list of potential causes of chest pain, including cardiac, aortic, esophageal, lung, pleura, musculoskeletal, neurological causes of chest pain. Diagnosis of acute coronary syndrome. The assessment of acute chest pain depends on, number one and foremost, is the analysis of the character of the pain and its associated features, evaluation of the electrocardiogram, serial measurements of biochemical markers of cardiac damage such as troponin I and T. A 12-lead electrocardiogram is mandatory and defines the initial triage management and treatment of patients with acute coronary syndrome. Patients with ST segment elevation or new bundle branch block require emergency reperfusion therapy. In patients with acute coronary syndrome without ST segment elevation, the ECG or the electrocardiogram may show transient or persistent ST segment T wave changes including ST depression and T-wave inversion. Investigations, 12-lead electrocardiogram. Crucial in the diagnosis of acute coronary syndrome, but might be non-diagnostic in up to one-third of the cases. Serial ECGs are important when the diagnosis is uncertain or in the presence of recurrent or persistent symptoms. The earliest ECG change is usually ST segment deviation. With proximal occlusion of a major coronary artery, ST segment elevation or new bundle branch block is seen initially, with later diminution in the size of the R wave and, in cases of transmural or full thickness infarctions, development of a Q wave. Subsequently, the T wave becomes inverted because of a change in ventricular repolarization. This change persists after the ST segment has returned to normal. This is demonstrated in figures from A through E in this slide. I am pointing to a possible discussion in the face-to-face -face mini lecture in case you have any questions regarding the ST segment, regarding the R wave, regarding the diminution of the R wave, regarding the Q wave or the T wave inversion. The ECG changes are best seen in the leads that face the ischemic or infarcted area. When there has been antraceptal infarction, abnormalities are found in one or more leads from V1 to V4 while anterolateral infarction produces changes from V4 to V6 along with changes in AVL and lead 1. Inferior infarction is best shown in leads 2, 3, and AVF. In case you have any questions about locating the leads, please discuss this in the face-to-face -face mini lecture. In non-ST segment elevation acute coronary syndromes, there is partial occlusion of a major vessel or complete occlusion of a minor vessel, causing either unstable angina or partial thickness or non-transmural or subendocardial myocardial infarction. This is usually associated with ST segment depression and T wave changes. In the presence of infarction, this may be accompanied by some loss of R waves in the absence of Q waves. Investigations. Plasma cardiac bi biomarkers. In unstable angina, there is no detectable rise in cardiac biomarkers or enzymes and the initial diagnosis is made from the clinical history and the electrocardiogram only. In contrast, myocardial infarction causes a rise in the plasma concentration of enzymes and proteins that are normally concentrated within the cardiac cells. 
Of course, this is explained by the fact that the cardiac cells are damaged, the cell membranes are damaged, and the enzymes within the cardiac cells are released into the circulation and are therefore detectable by laboratory techniques to detect the cardiac enzymes or proteins. These biochemical markers are creatine kinase, a more sensitive and cardiac specific form of this isoenzyme is called creatine kinase MB and the cardiac specific proteins troponins T and I. Admission and usually daily serial estimations are helpful because it is the change in the plasma concentrations of these markers that confirms the diagnosis of myocardial infarction. This slide shows changes in plasma cardiac biomarker concentrations after myocardial infarction. Creatine kinase and troponin I, or cardiac troponin I, are the first to rise, followed by aspartate transaminase AST, then lactate or hydroxybutyrate dehydrogenase. It's worth noting that in patients treated with reperfusion therapy, whether it's primary percutaneous intervention or thrombolytic therapy, a rapid rise in plasma creatine kinase happens, which is called the washout effect. Echocardiography. Echocardiography is used in patients with acute coronary syndromes too assess ventricular function and detect important complications such as mural thrombus, cardiac rupture, ventricular septal defect, mitral regurgitation, and pericardial effusion. End of part two. Thank you very much.